It's Sophia from Sophia the Scientist, and I have a very special guest with me, Dirty. Be sure that you go check out her video before we get started. Today we are taking you on location. We're taking you to Crowley's Ridge in Northeast Arkansas. Crowley's Ridge is an unusual geological formation that rises 250 to 550 feet above the plain of the Mississippi River Delta in a 150 mile line from southeastern Missouri to the Mississippi River near Helena, Arkansas. It is the most prominent feature in the Mississippi alluvial plain between southeastern Missouri and the Gulf of Mexico. Just how did this unusual formation come to exist? Most hill and mountain ranges form from some tectonic plates, but there are no but there are no plates in this area. For decades, the formation was thought to have originally been an island between the Mississippi River and Ohio River. This is a that was isolated as a long, low, hilly ridge after the rivers changed course millions of years ago. Recent research, however, questions that origin. Deposits are found along both sides of the Mississippi River Valley. These deposits are a classic example of glacial deposits. Crowley's Ridge is a natural deposit accumulation point. There is evidence that the, that the area of elevation has increased over the years, suggesting that uplift is still taking place. This alternative explanation suggests a link between the ridge and the nearby new measured earthquake zone. So what created Crowley's Ridge? We'll let's go find out. But before we get started with the video, be sure that you subscribe down below and hit the like button. Okay, so we just climbed to the top of a silo. And if you can see behind me, all that land right there is flat. Same thing with back here. But if you look closely, right behind me, those little trees right there, that's Crowley's Ridge right there. So, we will see you at Crowley's Ridge to discover everything. Bye! So, we're currently hiking to the highest peak on Crowley's Ridge called Big Rock. Sorry, I almost fell right there. But, um, I will see y'all once we get up to Big Rock so that y'all can see what it looks like. So, I'll see you later. Okay, so we're currently on the highest peak of Crowley's Ridge, and right behind me, those rocks right there, those are some of the rocks from Big Rocks, but we're going to get closer so that you can see how big they are and stuff, so here comes that. Okay, so I'm on top of a big rock, and like, we're all on top of them, they're so big and ginormous, but then like, below us are some more big rocks. So yeah, it's like kind of scary, but it's okay. So I'll see you guys later. Here's some more examples of big rocks. There's so many, oh my goodness. Okay, see you guys later. So now that we have seen what Crowley's Ridge and big rocks looks like, I have three examples sitting right in front of me of how mountain ridges are created. So the first one over here requires a little bit of ice that are represented as glaciers so I'm just going to push it and then bring it back and when I bring it back that is basically saying the glacier has melted when it melts it leaves a mountain ridge behind so the next one that I have over here is I have two cardboard uh, little pieces right here and those are represented as tectonic plates and I'm just going to push those together like that and as you can see right there there is a little mountain of land right there and then on this one I have some water in a water bottle and this is represented as a river so I'm just going to pour it right there and as you can see most of the parts when it went like right here and down here it created a little ridge and once the river either dries up or changes courses, it leaves a little mountain ridge behind. So how do you think Crowley's Ridge was formed? Go, let's go see. Hey guys, it's Sophia from Sophia the Scientist, and today I'm at the Arkansas Department of Geology to see Mr. 
Mr. Bowfire. He's going to tell us more about Crowley's Bridge. So let's go. Mr. Pryor's office. So I'm doing a little research on the origins of Crowley's Ridge. We know there are no volcanoes or play activity in this area, but I'm not sure if, but I'm not sure if glaciers or even the Mississippi River caused the ridge, but that's what I'm here to find out. I recently visited an area locally known as Big Rocks, which is one of the highest points on Crowley's Ridge. I brought some pictures that I'd like for you to take a look at and explain to us what is going on here with the massive boulders and cliff faces. So here are the pictures. Okay. And like I said, the, you see these same some of these same boulders at Crowley's Ridge State Park, and there was a master's thesis done uh, from Fayetteville a few years ago. And uh, a young lady, her interpretation on these things is that about 45 million years ago, you had uh, a unique hydrologic situation in, a, in maybe a, a, a sand flat. And the hydrology in this area uh, had a lot of dissolved silica in the water. And this, this dryness pulled this silica-rich water in up and through the sand and basically cemented it and turned it into sandstone. And this sandstone is quite remarkable for eastern Arkansas because typically you don't find hard rock at all. But here you have rock that's almost as hard and, and uh, what we call lithified as you would find, say, on Pettyjean Mountain or Mount Magazine and stuff like that. It's, it's actually quite incredible and rather deceptive that you have such nice hard rock for eastern Arkansas. But it's a very, we think a very localized phenomenon uh, that you find on that northwestern part of the ridge. So now tell us how Crowley's Ridge came to be. Well, uh, one of the most recent comprehensive pieces of work on northeastern Arkansas and what we call the Mississippi Embayment was done back in 1994 uh, by the uh, name of a gentleman named Saucier. And basically he, he drew a series of uh, simplified maps that depict what he interpreted as the different drainages that occurred at different times uh, over the last almost uh, two million years or so. So basically what you've got is you've got a situation where the ancestral Ohio River was flowing in what we call the eastern lowlands and uh, creating the, the flatlands between the ridge and Memphis and then the actual ancestral Mississippi River created the western lowlands which is the flatlands that you see between uh, Little Rock and Forest City and stuff. So this river system uh, went through various changes over the last many thousands of years until you get to uh, nearly almost toward the end of the ice ages, uh, 12,000, 9,000 years ago, the, the Ohio River basically captured uh, the Mississippi River, what we call stream capture, and diverted all the flow then to what we call now call the Eastern Lowlands and where the Mississippi River basically exists today. And so now we have what we call undersized streams in the Western Lowlands like the, the Black River and the White River and stuff like that um, that occupy this, this large lowland on the west side of the ridge. So the ridge interpretation is that this is actually is a is a drainage divide it's just a part of the upland like you see in western Tennessee and, and parts of Mississippi and even southern Arkansas that remains after the rivers these major river systems that carved or basically formed the lowlands on either side of the ridge so the the ridge is what we call a drainage divide it either goes east toward the St. Francis and Mississippi 
where it goes west to the Alleghill and eventually down to the White River. Cool. Before we leave, we found this rock at Big Rocks. There are some uniform indentations on it. Could they be fossil imprints or are they more modern, ca more modern caused by humans? Okay, this is a piece of what they call chert or flint. The marks seem to be part of what a remnant of a fossil, possibly of a fossil shell, sh shell with H E L L, <laughs> of a marine animal uh, that was alive when this was a piece of soft sediment uh, at the bottom of the ocean, probably over 300 million years ago. And this is just a portion of the shell impression into the into the sediment at the time and. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. It may have been something like a, what we call a bivalve. Something uh, kind of like a clam, but even more primitive than a clam, what we call a brachiopod or something like that. There's other marks here that may be, again, just, just the impressions or, or the kind of a ghost of a shape uh, of a shell and stuff like that. But fossils like this and, the, and the, these gravels like this are, are, can be fairly common. You can find sometimes, again, the brachiopods would look like a clam. You can find corals. You can find uh, what we call uh, crinoids, very common, which are related to starfish and stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much for sitting down with us today and taking your time today. You're welcome. It's nice to meet you. You too. First of all, I want to give a big thank you to Dr. Becky Wyatt and Mr. Bill Pryor for helping me figure out how Crowley's Ridge was formed. Before we go, be sure that you are subscribed down below and that you have smashed that like button. Bye-bye!